today I want to share on the reason of Christmas. It's like a child that has been taken away from a parent. The humanity has been separated from God. Just think of a child being kidnapped or taken away from its parents and what can happen to the child? It can go through so many physical or mental abuses. And, and finally the child could be sold as a slave or, or used as a, for like a beggar or, or even being killed for its body parts. In the same way, the humanity has departed from the loving father. And because the humanity has been departed from the loving father, the humanity has gone through so many sufferings, the abuses, the wars, the diseases, all the chaos that is happening in this world is because the humanity has separated from the father like a child kidnapped from from his parent. But then God doesn't want the humanity to go like that. He he wants to rescue the humanity. Like a father who lost a child who will do anything under the heaven to bring the child back. The same way God wanted to bring the humanity back into his own house. And Christmas is God's rescue mission for humanity. Right? It's a rescue mission. Like the the, the humanity is lost and he wants to rescue the, the, the humanity back. Like like in a war zone, the soldiers go and rescue the people from a, a, a war zone. The same way God wanted to start a rescue mission for the humanity to come back and that is called Christmas. Like the way the father have, might have told many people to find a child. Probably gone to the police, probably like gone to many other places to tell the people, hey, have you seen my child? Have you seen my child? Right? But then the father himself takes a mission that I'm not going to depend on anybody, I'm going to do the job myself. I'm going to find the person, find my child where my child is. And, and that is the same way God sent prophets, God sent various other people, right? The seers, the kings, many people God raised up in the Old Testament. But then God said, no, I'm going to go myself to rescue my people and that's called Christmas. The father would not hesitate to go to any place to rescue the child. Like, if the child would have been sold in a market, the child would have gone into a place where there is war, the child would have been sold into a brothel place, right? There can be so many places, but do you think that, oh, that is brothel, so I cannot go? No, the father would take such a step to even go to any places to rescue the child. The same way, God came into this world to rescue the humanity, though it was a messy place. Christmas is to not just to celebrate the birth, but to celebrate the mission of Jesus Christ. Christmas is not just to celebrate about Jesus Christ, it is also to celebrate the people whom he has come to rescue. We are all glad that the day that uh, during the time of Christmas, not because of the season, not because of the spirit of Christmas, not because of the, the Santa Claus or, or, or because of the Christmas tree or, or the cakes, but understanding why Jesus has to come, why he has to come from heaven, why he has to come into this world as a human, because we know that he has come to save us, you and me, individually. It is, it is that mission that we celebrate during Christmas. The state of the humanity was explained clearly in this verse in Luke 15.32. Luke 15.32. It was right that we should make merry and be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So this is a, a verse during uh, when Jesus was explaining the parable of uh, the prodigal son. Right? And the father is explaining the state of the son who came back. And he's saying, the son was dead, the son was lost. Amen? The state of the humanity was that, that the humanity, the sons of God, has been lost and dead in this world. And when he came back to the father, the father said, now he is alive and now he is found. Like a, like a child that has gone away from the father which is lost, right? And probably the child is dead, he could never come back. But then, God came to, on a rescue mission while the time of death, God wanted to rescue the humanity. When the time that the humanity was lost, God came to rescue the humanity. So God came as human being in the form of Jesus Christ into the world. Jesus Christ was not just came as some person 2000 years back and now we have this AD and BC separation. Not just he is a person who just came into existence during the time 2000 years back. He is a person who was already there in, a, in, in the eternity. The, the Son of God, Christ Jesus, was given as a gift into the, to the mankind, to the humanity. Let's read Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, 
everlasting father and prince of peace. So in, 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 in the physical nature, a child is born. That is what we celebrate as Christmas. A, a baby is born. A child is born. But then a son is given. The son of God was already there. He was actually given to us. He was not born at the time. He was already there. Right? That tells that Jesus Christ is a person of eternity. He's not He's not just a person who was born in this time and space 2000 years back. He's a person who was in eternity already. Normally when a, child, when, a, when a son or a daughter is born, we say that son is born, a daughter is born, rejoice with me. Right? But then here it is clearly saying the son is given, only the child is born. I want to emphasize on this point that the, the son of God is a person who was not just suddenly appeared 2000 years back. He is the God from eternity to eternity. Let's read John 6, 61 and 62. Right? Here he said in the 62 verse, what then if you see, should see the son of man ascend where he was before? He was, he was clear, telling clearly that I am a person who came down from heaven and I am going back to that place. So it is like he was visiting a, a, another world, right? But he's going back to a, a permanent world which is heaven. Sometimes we are so much stuck by only the world that we are seeing right now, right? Because we are born in flesh and blood. What we know is all about the world right, right now, what we see and, and feel and experience. But then, there is another world, another realm, which is a permanent realm, right? And Jesus came from that realm into a lower realm and to save the humanity. Let's take one more verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 47. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So he's God who came down from heaven and he's just born as a child 2000 years back. But let's all understand one thing, Jesus was there in eternity. He was already there. He was just visiting into this earth. Now, before Jesus is accomplishing something on the earth to rescue the humanity, there are many background that I want to explain clearly, right? So that how he is made worthy to rescue the humanity. It was it was not just given God, God the Father could not give this to anybody on the on the even in the, in the spiritual realm, right? He chose the Son, Jesus Christ, to go and and rescue the humanity. And I'm just giving you a background. So we understood from these verses that Jesus was a person from eternity, from heaven. So we understood from this that Jesus came down from heaven. He's from eternity. Now let's read um, why Jesus has to be born in the womb of a virgin. Right? That is never heard of. It was never heard before Jesus was born. It was never heard after Jesus was born. That a man or a child could be birthed with just a woman. Let's take this verse. Genesis 3.15 It's a very very important verse for the humanity and it clearly says that between your seed and her seed that your seed is the, the snake or the serpent and then her seed that is what Bible clearly talks about in Genesis Now why Jesus has to be born to a virgin? When, when the humanity sinned against the Lord the entire generation that came from Adam came from the seed of a man from one seed of a man to another seed of a man. So the seed of a man, the entire generation of the entire world was populated. So the entire population of the world is populated from the seed of a man, from the first man, Adam. And that's how the, not only the, the physical body was made, even the nature of a human being, the corrupt heart, the sinful nature, and all those things all came from the seed of a man from one generation to another generation. So if another man is born the same way like any other human being on this earth through the, through the human seed, then that person is not eligible to save the humanity. It is the, the reason being that the person who is born with the same sinful nature, he is not having the holiness and the righteousness for to save another person. Like a blind person saying to another blind person, I will give you my eye, you can see. No, it's not possible. Both are blind. No, no, one person cannot help the other, other person. Jesus has to be born in a different way compared to any other human being on this earth. That's why he has to be born for a virgin. And in this verse, in Genesis 3.15, it says that her seed, woman doesn't have a seed, right? But then, God did a supernatural miracle in a woman's womb that she was able to produce a child on her own. Let's take Luke 1, 34 and 35. Luke 1, 34 and 35. Mary said to angel, how can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. So, here the Bible is clearly telling that the way that the Spirit of God or God's power was doing something in Mary's womb, a transformation in Mary's womb that 
that womb is now capable of producing a child on its own instead of having a human intervention. That is why Genesis 3.15 says it is her seed, the woman's seed, right? It is it is a way that God gave the capability to uh, Mary to bring forth a seed of her uh, through a supernatural intervention. And because Jesus was born without a man's intervention to a virgin, he did not inherit all the corrupt nature of a human being, of all the sin and all the all the wickedness that the human humanity has. He did not inherit from from the humanity. So he is now capable of rescuing the humanity. The salvation of humanity is not that easy, right? It has to be done by a person who is from eternity. It cannot be done by anybody on the earth. And then even when that person cannot come like an angel to save, he has to be born as a human being. Now if he has to be born as a human being, he cannot be born from a seed of an, another man because he will inherit the corrupt nature. So he has to be born through a, through a virgin. God has to do something miraculous, right? So there are so many very important steps or crucial things that God was doing to rescue the humanity. See the see the love that God has for the humanity that it took that much effort to come and rescue the humanity. That is why in Acts 4.12, if you read Acts 4.12, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So it is clearly telling that the name of Jesus is the only name that is given for humanity to be saved. There is no other way. Now Jesus has to do one more important step. He has now come from heaven. He has been now born into a virgin. Now the most crucial step comes now. You see this uh, first uh, picture that the humanity has been separated from God because of sin and death was ruling the humanity. And now Jesus has to take the curse. Now he is born as a uh, uh, to a virgin. Now he has come from heaven. Now he is born to a virgin. Now he has to do an important step of taking the death away from the humanity. The death that Bible talks about are two types of death. The first death that Bible talks about is separation from God. So in this picture you can see God is the source of all life. And when the humanity is separated from God, that itself is that even though the humanity is living for some time, say 60-70 years, the, the separation from God itself is the first death, the spiritual death. It is like, think of a uh, uh, a human being can that human being exist apart from living any place anywhere on the earth. Just think of the human being has to go to space, right? Can the human being live from 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 this place? No, it is not possible because it is here on this earth to a certain level, certain meters. You will have oxygen and then you can breathe. If beyond that, you will not have oxygen, right? And the humanity or the, the body will die. In the same way, when the humanity is separated from God that moment that spiritual death starts happening and that is the first thing that Jesus came to address that to bring the humanity back to the father back to God himself for that Jesus has to be separated from the father so that other person can come into his presence so that's why we read in Matthew 27 46 Matthew 27 46 Jesus the God the father God the son were one they were never separated but then for rescuing the humanity Jesus has to be taken away from God's presence so that the humanity can be brought inside God's presence. See, this is a very, very toughest part for Jesus. It was not that he was a king of heaven, but he was born in a manger. That was not the toughest part. Right? And he was had to be born to a virgin. That was not the toughest part. But then the toughest part was he being separated from the Father. That's why he said, Why have you forsaken me? I, it means that he was separated from the Father. He was not crying on the cross. Or, uh, uh, or with a loud voice, not because of the pain. The pain, the greatest pain for Jesus was he was separated from God the Father. And that's the reason he was crying out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Basically, Jesus traded this place for the humanity. He, he was supposed to be one with the Father. He said, I will separate from you so that the humanity can come back to you. And, and because of that, he was separated from the Father, he had to die. Like the way humanity, when it separates from God, it dies. The same way Jesus was separated from the Father and he died. Man, just think of the love of Jesus, the love of the Father. That they took extreme steps, extreme steps to save the humanity, to bring them back to his family. And so we saw three different and important steps. That a person has to come from heaven, that person has to be born as a human being, and that too as a, uh, as a human being to a virgin, and then that person has to die on the cross separated from the God the Father and all these things 
has to be done perfectly so that the humanity can be brought back into God. This is so important. Anything that is separated from God will die. They will not be eternal life. They cannot live forever. Anything that is separated from God will see death. Now, the Son of God became a Son of Man so that the sons of men can become sons of God. Man, we all need to be, become the sons and daughters of God. Only then we will have eternal life. Everybody wants to live long. Everybody wants to live forever. They might they will spend anything, all their money, all their wealth, they will spend for living forever. Today the entire medical industry thrives on this one feeling of humanity. I need to live more, at least a few more years. Just that 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 thought of a humanity drives the entire medical industry. How much ever money people spend, even if they are spending crores and crores of money, they cannot say that I, I can live for another hundred years. I want to live for another hundred years. No. The money will fail after a certain point. Right? They are going to see the physical death. But all that humanity is thinking about living life on this earth. Somehow I need to live a life on this earth. That's it. But then there is a greater thing. That is, we have to live our life, eternal life with God. How much ever we live, how much ever number of years we live on this earth, if we are separated from God, we will be gone. Our, our soul, after its death, will be completely separated from God and it will be in torment. John 3.16 we many times go through this verse without much mindfulness of what this verse, how much weighty this verse is, right? It is talking about perishing and everlasting life. There is a life everlasting, there is no death. And Jesus said, I promise that everlasting life for you by giving my own life on the cross. Amen. The everlasting life, the life that will never end, that the, the money, the, the medicine that could not buy that life, Jesus promised that life for the humanity. And that is the reason for Christmas. We don't just celebrate birth of Christ, right? Birth of Christ is good. But then why he was born to a virgin? Why he had to come into this world from heaven? Why he has to die on the cross, a brutal death, and separated from the Father? All those are the reason and the requirements for the humanity to be restored back to Father. And for a for a person who received Christ, that the physical death doesn't matter at all. Because we are going to be with God from ever and ever. The eyes are not seen, the ears are not heard, the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Jesus Himself said that I go to prepare a place for you and I will come back to receive you. All the signs for Jesus to come back again is already happening in this world. Well, let's take this verse, Matthew 24, 24, 6 and 7. Yeah, and there will be famines. So what it's saying is wars and about the famines, the pestilences, earthquakes, all these things are the signs when Jesus is going to come back again. And we are already seeing that today. In this world, we are already seeing so many wars, the Ukraine and, and uh, Russia war that is already happening. There is already a trouble that is brewing in the Middle East, right? All, all, already some skirmishes are happening between India and China and the border. Then all the nations will rise against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. The wars will be there, the pestilences will be there. Pestilences like, you know, about all the uh, uh, diseases that is spreading. So God is telling, giving us a hope in the midst of all this chaos, I am there to rescue you, I am there to protect you, do not be troubled, all you need is me. So Jesus today in this Christmas is giving us a fresh hope, you have life, you have peace, you have protection in me alone. The primary mission of Jesus was to bring the humanity back with God, to become one with God and when he achieved that, when he gave his life and achieved that purpose, Jesus also gave a commandment to the humanity that you should love one another. Let's take a couple of verses and then we'll close. John 17, 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. This is a prayer of Jesus to God the Father, right? And it says, and it says here, that they may be one, just as we are one, right? So, Jesus wanted to have that oneness, that God, the Son, and the Spirit are one, the same way God wanted Jesus wanted the humanity to be one. They don't want to fight. They don't want to be separated from, from God and from each other. And, and Jesus warned that during the end times, the love will go down so much. In Matthew 24, 12, if you read, because, 24, 12, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Man, so Jesus warned about this, that ask my children that you should love one another. This is a warning sign, right? When, when the love is growing cold in the world, it's a warning sign that we should be strengthened in love. John 15, 12. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. So today in this Christmas message, God is telling, let your love grow. As I have come to give my life, I took these many steps or these many uh, hurdles to come and rescue the humanity. I'm giving this message to you. 
that you love one another. And, and Jesus said that this is how people will know that you are my disciples, that when you love one another. Amen. So let's take this message. We might have heard about the message of love. Many times we might have heard. But let's bring this back into our mind that you're from this Christmas, Lord, help me to love more. Help me to be more sacrificial. Help me to be more self-giving. Help me not to be selfish, but self-giving. Amen. So let's all pray. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for this day of Christmas. Thank you, Father God, Lord. You came down as a human being, taking, Lord, that many risks and hurdles, crossed all those hurdles, Lord, to come and rescue us. When we just celebrate Christmas, Lord, many times we are diverted by many other formalities and, and occasion, but we forget the, the real crux the real meaning behind Christmas that God came as man to rescue man. And Father, we pray, let this love that you have displayed be a real meaning in our hearts today. The love that was portrayed on the cross, the love that was portrayed when you were born in the manger, leaving all the heavenly glory in a stable. What drove you to do that? Because of love. Because of love, a sacrificial love, a love that is beyond our comprehension, beyond our imagination. Such love was displayed during the time of Christmas and during the time of the cross. And Lord, help us to remember that. Help us to remember that. Let that love be invited in our hearts of God. And we pray that Lord, that we will not be carried away by the things of this world. But Lord, let the love be displayed through us to others. Through us to others. Let the love abound. Let the love abound. Let the love abound, O oh God. And Father, we pray that during this Christmas, let one message be carried in our hearts, the love of God and love for others. The love of God, that we understand the love of God and the love for others. And Father, we pray that Lord, let each and every one in this place, O oh God, who is hearing this message, Father, I pray that Lord, let the love abound in their hearts. Let it be overflown in their hearts. And Father, I pray, let that life the love life, the abundant love life that you've given us, let it be manifested in our lives also. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Lord, we pray, Lord, we bless all your people who have come here. And Lord, we pray, Father God, let this Christmas, Lord, Christ be birthed again, one more time, in everyone's hearts and minds. Lord, everyone's lives, everyone, every family, every, Lord, every family, Lord, Father, I pray, Lord, let Christ be birthed again. And so that love will be birthed again into our hearts of God. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Father. Lord, we pray that, Lord, in the coming days, even when the world is in the dense darkness, when the love of many is growing cold, people betray each other, people run uh, without purpose. Father, we pray, let our li lives, O oh God, be a light of beacon and hope, a beacon of hope, the light that is, you have given us, the love and the light that you have given us, become a light and become a beacon of hope for others, O oh God, so that when they see our love, when they see our concern, when they see our sacrifice, Lord, people will understand, truly, Jesus Christ is born into our lives. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We commit the people in your hands. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you enable us, Lord, to see this day. Lord, Father God, and we thank you, Father God, that, Lord, we have a great hope because you are with us. And we are having a great hope for the next year as well. Lord, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.